Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, me and my glasses welcome you to November favorites. Yay! Um, so I have. I hope you had an amazing November, a wonderful Thanksgiving if you celebrate it. And um, yeah, let's dive on in because I've got i got a lot of stuff to get through. So we're gonna start off with the makeup stuff. Um, I have some other clothing, music sort of things as well. I'll save for the end in case. Uh, you don't give a shit, which is totally cool. Uh, I won't be offended. <laughs> um, but moving on to the makeup stuff, the first two items are brushes from Real Techniques. So this is the sculpting brush. Um, it's been my go-to foundation application method um, all month. I got both of these pretty early on, maybe even the end of October. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Um, but I've been using this almost exclusively for my foundation. If I haven't used this brush, I've used my fingers. Like that's, those are the only two methods I've been using this month. It is great. It's the perfect size, at least for my face, um, where it's big enough where it doesn't take you 10 hours to put your foundation on, but it's not so big. It's overwhelming. Um, the kind of angled part of it, I don't know. It's just, trying to make this sound fancy but really it's just a great brush it blends the foundation in really well you kind of paint it on um, but it's not it doesn't leave your makeup looking streaky and it's very quick like a stroke and it's it's blended in perfectly so I really I highly recommend this brush if you are in the market for an inexpensive foundation brush this is awesome uh, this has also been part of my daily routine. Um, this is the setting brush, and this I've been using to set under my eyes. <laughs> um, and it's great. I've also used it for highlighter. Um, and it's just, it's nice. And if I need to cover up a blemish, you know, it's nice to set, um, set concealer in little small areas or for highlighter, and probably for other things too, but that's mainly what I've been using this for. As far as foundation goes, I have been um, rather enjoying this NYX Invincible Fullest Coverage Foundation. So this is in the shade Ivory. Um, and this has been in a drawer <laughs> for a long time. Um, and if you watched my top drawer makeup video, which I'll link below, um, I mentioned I pulled this out uh, to check it out and see if I like it or if I can destash it. And I like it. <laughs> so, yay. Um, it's quite pale. It matches my neck more than my face because my neck is um, uh, quite a bit lighter than my face. Um, but I like that. In winter, I really kind of like that very pale skin with bold eye, bold lip sort of thing. So I've really been enjoying this. It's um, it's not, you know, it's not my holy grail foundation. You can tell it's a kind of a cheaper foundation. You can kind of, you can kind of see it. You know what I mean? It's not, you know, super cakey or obvious unless you really pile on too much and then it, it can, it can get a little messy. Um, but you know how you know, higher end foundations just have a nicer texture and at least in my experience um, so I mean you can kind of tell it's a drugstore foundation if you know but it's a really good one if that makes sense um, I still am considering getting the um, Too Faced Born This Way because they have the two lighter shades on the Too Faced website um, but they're both sold out. I, I was going to get them for Cyber Monday, and they were both sold out. So, you know. So that's still in my mind. But in the meantime, this has been uh, this has been pretty good to me. All right, I have some updates, um, favorites and uh, not-so-favorite, of my recent Wet n' Wild haul, which, again, I will link below if you're interested in um, seeing the haul and uh, little first impressions. Um, so I've been using these things often this month so I have a better idea of how I like them and most of these have actually been kind of more favorites so the first two are eyeliners this one is the Proline felt tip eyeliner and this is just in black um, so this is a very you know kind of traditional 
um, felt tip. It's very soft. It's nice. It's pigmented. Um, this doesn't really move around. It doesn't smudge. Um, it sets well. I, I doubt it's waterproof. I mean, it doesn't claim to be, so I'm not going to hold that against it, but it stays really well. It doesn't um, transfer on my lids. Um, I mean, I always put a primer on anyway because my eyelids are oily and a little bit hooded, so it's just, you know, asking for trouble. But this doesn't transfer um, throughout the day, and it doesn't fade. It's it's just it's a really nice little eyeliner um, for the few dollars that it is. You know, this might be worth checking out. Also, and what I'm wearing on my eyes today, if you can see, that's the problem with glasses. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, this is the Graphic Marker Eyeliner, um, also from the Pro Line, line. Um, and this is in Air Liner Blue. So this has kind of almost a ugh, Sharpie style tip. So I guess the idea is you can, you know, do a very thin line, you can do a thick line, you can... You can play with it. I don't know. You can play with it <laughs> if you want to. It's a really pretty color. Um, this is not as nice of an eyeliner, quite frankly, as the other one, the felt tip, the black one. Um, this does not set. It doesn't transfer on my lids or anything, but if I forget and I rub my eye, it, it will smear. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Again, this I think was $3.99. So you know, it's not the best eyeliner ever, but I have been using it a lot this month. This has kind of been my go-to look. This um, eyeliner or winged liner in general, uh, kind of purpley lip, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much been been my go-to. Um, so you know, it, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it this month, and if you have tried it, I'd love to know your thoughts. I dislike the packaging, not this packaging, but these come, excuse me, in um, boxes kind of like the e.l.f. stuff where it's mostly air and it just seems so wasteful and I wish they wouldn't do that. Just sell it like this. This is fine. You don't need the box with it, but that's, that's yeah, neither here nor there. Um, another thing that I've actually, I've consciously reached for this several times is the Max Fanatic Cat Eye Mascara. Whoa, sorry for the glare. Oh, God. Oh, God. So, um, this is not bad mascara. I'm wearing it today. Um, it's, you know, it's not my holy grail mascara or anything, but I have actually, you know, reached for this, which for Wet n Wild Mascara has never happened before. So um, the brush is an interesting kind of fan um, shape with these little, little tiny short bristles on the other end. And even the fanned bristles are pretty short. So I actually, I don't mind the brush. I don't know what it's supposed to be doing for you, but I don't mind it. It's not um, difficult to work with. The formula itself is pretty wet. And also pretty natural looking. Uh, so, you know, I, I generally like a little bit more oomph. And yet I have all kind of natural looking mascaras at the moment. So I don't know. Uh, if you have any mascara recommendations, please throw them at me. But this is not, it's really, it's really <laughs> not bad. It doesn't flake or smudge. Um, it's even lasted through a Zumba class, which is not an easy feat. And, uh, yeah, so if you're in the market for, you know, a pretty natural-looking, um, cruelty-free drugstore mascara, this might be something to check out. Um, I also want to mention the Doll Eye Mascara from NYX, which I don't have with me at the moment, but that is another mascara that I have been wearing a lot this month. Um, it's one of those tubing mascaras. You can see it in that um, haul video, so again, I will link that below, but I've been wearing that a lot, and that's been really great. Uh, again, it doesn't smudge or flake. It's, it's, it's got a little bit more oomph than this, but not much. Um, you know, so again, it's it's a relatively natural looking mascara, but it's really nice and it's really, really easy to remove. And I feel like it's a lot nicer to my lashes um, themselves, especially with the removal process. So that has also been a favorite this month. 
Okay, and I want to update you on the Fergie around the clock blushes I um, talked about in that haul and also did a little first impression on. So this one that I actually wore in the video is called Brush with Destiny, and it is a really nice peachy, um, very shiny, glowy, but not glittery, which I like, um, blush. <laughs> That's the word I want. Um, it's really, it's really pretty on the cheeks. It blends really well. I mean, it is quite glowy, so if you don't like that, you won't like this at all. But I do. Um, and I found that this has gone nice with this kind of look that I've been doing. This one I have not been as thrilled with. It is quite powdery and patchy. I really like the color. Um, so I've been trying to, like, play with it anyway. Um, so I'll maybe put like a nicer blush kind of all over the cheeks and then pop this on the apple because it gives that really nice kind of freshly um, flushed, like just coming in from outside kind of look, if that makes sense. Uh, again, the camera's washing it out like, whoa, it's really bright and yet it looks almost white on camera. So I don't know why I'm even swatching this out because it swatches so poorly. Um, but it just, it doesn't blend as nicely as I want it to. I keep using it because I want to, I want to like it more, but I just, I don't recommend this one. Um, this is brush with danger, if I forgot to say that. Uh, only texture wise. It's just, it's just not a very nice blush to use. Um, I do have it on my cheeks today, if you can even see, which you probably can't, um, because it doesn't show up on camera for some reason. So, uh, eh. Uh, now, like I said earlier, as far as lips go, I've been really into kind of this dark, 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 darker purpley lip. Um, I still, you know, have been reaching for my Cherry Bomb and those kind of dark, uh, bricky red type shades too. But I've really been leaning towards the purples this month. Um, I got four lipsticks out to show you, but they're all pretty much exactly the same color. Uh, so I'll just really quickly run through them. The one that's on my lips right now is Vintage Vibe from Wet n Wild. This is a limited edition um, from the fall collection. I, so I found this with a bunch of other lipsticks and nail polishes. Um, I keep seeing it around, so you can probably still find this, but I have some other options if you can't. Um, the Fergie Cre uh, Ferguson Crest Cabernet is a very similar color. This has just a little bit more blue in it, I think. Um, but otherwise, they're very similar. In fact, I'll just, I'll just swatch these out. So there's Ferguson Crest Cabernet. Here is Vintage Vibe. And then I have two Milani shades that I've also been reaching for, which I, I really, I honestly did not realize how almost exact all of these colors are until I got them together. I'm like, oh, these are basically the same shade. So this is one of the regular color statement lipsticks in Sangria. So that's a little bit more blue than the other ones. And then if you want a matte version, um, this is the color statement matte in matte flirty. Which again, they're all the freaking same shade. <laughs> but that's, that's what has been my, my favorite over the month. So there you go. So those are my makeup favorites. Um, yeah, so... If you're interested, I will continue on with some, some other favorites. All right, so first clothing item is this kind of cowl scarf. I'll, I'll put it on for you. I actually knitted this myself, so I'm very proud. I'm very proud of myself. Um, so, you know, you can do a few different things with it. You can even make this a little hood. You can make this a little kind of shoulder warmer. Um, it's inspired by a piece of clothing that was in the first season of the show Outlander, if any of you watched that. Um, and when I watched that, like, when did that come out? Like, one or two years ago. Um, I want to say two years ago. 
it's been that long. Ah, time flies so quickly. Uh, <laughs> when I was watching it with some friends, we were all like, oh my gosh, we should learn how to make that. And I finally did. Um, and I, I really love it. It's really warm and cozy. Um, the yarn I got is really soft. I like the pattern of it. Um, I just, I've, I've really been enjoying this. Also, I have this, um, well, kind of, it's not a, I guess a sweater. Would you call it a sweater? Oh God, not with my swatches. <laughs> it's white, which is, you know, maybe not the best thing. Um, but it's, you know, a little like cover up thing. Um, robe. <sighs> I don't know what I'm saying. Does it say? No, it doesn't. But anyway, this is from Gaim. So I'm sure this is ridiculously overpriced and expensive. Um, my mom got it and it doesn't fit her. So she gave it to me and I want to live in this. It is so soft and it's so soft all the way through. And I just, I don't want to wear anything under it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so, so soft and cuddly and it is so warm. It's in fact so warm that I, haven't always been able to wear it because it's been too warm um, some some of the days in November but it's just so wonderful I love just cu uh, curling up in this <laughs> um, anytime whether I'm out or in it's not you know the most um, flattering piece of clothing on me it's quite kind of fluffy it makes me look a little fluffy <laughs> uh, but it's so comfortable and warm and cozy and just like it's going to, I'm sure, continue to be a favorite um, throughout the cold months because it's just so, so cozy. Um, also, my hat that I've been wearing throughout the video um, has been another favorite this month. I'm not usually a hat person. They don't really suit me, unfortunately. But these kind of beanie styles, they really do. And something corporate. Whoop. Ah, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, um, we're a band, um, kind of the drive through records, kind of pop punk emo thing uh, in our kind of early, mid 2000s. Um, I, I was I was into all of that stuff and Something Corporate was one of my favorite bands. I still love them, but they haven't been a band for a while. So uh, I, I speak in the past tense. Um, but I got this at one of the shows. I saw them, I think, like 10 or 12 times um, over the course of a few years. So really love them. Um, this is from the kind of North album tour, if you're familiar with them. Yay. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just I it's really comfortable and warm and. I think it's kind of cute, uh, especially, you know, since I really, I like, I really look terrible in hats. Um, but this one I think I can kind of get away with. So I've really been enjoying this um, as it's gotten colder. And on that something corporate um, train, so to speak, uh, the music that I've really been into lately are um, Andrew McMahon, who was the lead singer of something corporate, had a band called Jack's Mannequin, um, who I love, and I recently kind of rediscovered their um, last album, People and Things, and it's so flipping good. It's so good. It's pretty much all I've been listening to for the past month and some, um, and there's a song on there particularly called Restless Dream that I am just obsessed with. It's really, I mean, it's a sad song. I tend to like kind of emotional, sad songs. My sister's much cooler. She likes kind of the angry, you know, <laughs> uh, and I've always been kind of the sentimental, uh, <laughs> depressing one, I guess. <laughs> um, but the song is kind of about, um, well, kind of about it. It's about the, you know, the kind of getting caught up in the fantasy of things that could have been but never were if you know what I mean like a relationship that maybe never started but you start to think oh would that I bet that would have been great you know that sort of thing so it's really I don't know I really like it I'll link it below um I definitely recommend checking out the whole album and also Andrew McMahon's latest album Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness um that song, it's, I've actually heard it on the radio, and I live under a rock. I don't know what's on the radio. Um, it's called um, Cecilia and the Satellite. 
So I don't know if you're familiar with that, but his that that album is also really really good, and I'll link that below too. Uh, and the only other thing I really want to mention is uh, any fellow Whovians out there, can we please talk about the last couple episodes of Doctor Who? Because I'm having lots of feelings, and I need to talk <laughs> about them to you. So um, let me know in the comments if you watch Doctor Who and how you feel about the last couple episodes, um, especially that Face the Raven. Oh, Oh, I knew it was coming, but I wasn't prepared, and I was much more emotional about it than I anticipated, because I was really kind of excited for that to happen, but then it happened, and I was like, oh, oh. if you watch Doctor Who, all of that will have made sense, <laughs> uh, but otherwise, um, thank you very much for watching this video, and for hanging out with me and watching my videos in general. I really, um, I, you know, I really, really do appreciate it. I really enjoyed um, doing this YouTube thing and I'm seriously considering, you know, really putting some effort into it because I really, I really enjoy it and I'd like to um, be a little bit more committed to it. Um, and I want to thank you for watching, for subscribing, for liking, for um, supporting. I have been blown away. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm still very new and very small, but I have been blown away by the kindness. Um, you know, I, I, I will get little notifications that I have a comment on my video and I'm always a little bit nervous because I'm waiting for, you know, somebody to be a dick for, you know, their own reasons. Um, and uh, I haven't experienced that yet. I have always been just kind of shocked at the kindness that you guys have shown me. So I really, I really do appreciate it. And um, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.